Urgent just almost you back, and this is Ukraine's F 16s just scored their first intercepts of the war. This is version of Sandbox. It's been two weeks since this video was out. Why not get okay? When did that happen? This is all when this like uh, recent thing was happening uh, with the Kursk invasion. And people told me there's no news of uh, F 16 being war. Apparently, because if Sandbox is reporting it, must be true. So, yeah, F 16s did see action apparently. That, that's interesting right because uh, when it comes to a lot of planes like f-16 f-15 like they're really old and the accent they've seen is mostly in like gulf war and things like that like what early afghanistan and things like that but you know there haven't been conflict like what's going on right now with russia and ukraine so f-16 actually working and being successful like that is really interesting right because i have seen people in the comments call, why why are you still talking about f-16 that is such old news it's like what is this new iphone F-16 is still F-16. I mean, come on. I get it. There are better planes now. But F-16 is still good, right? You can upgrade that. And they have a plan of upgrading that. Same thing with F-15. So, plane is a plane. It's like, you know, you can take a gun and modify it and make it more modern. Just like that. Planes are basically the same way. I mean, only element that, uh, you know, make older planes not well in today's uh, world is basically stealth. How are you going to make F-16 stealth? Otherwise... If stealth is not the point, I mean, it's already warfare. It's like stealth is not that important, which is like, I don't know which scenario would be like that. Uh, but yeah, mostly if it's like open war and it's just like shit is happening and the enemy knows where the planes are and you have still have to do something. At that time, like F-15 EX, F-16 would shine. You, you don't have to worry about stealth that much. Times like that, yeah, these planes would work. So let's see how they are working in Ukraine, apparently. So yeah. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe so that way I know which type of videos to react to more. Uh, you know, I've been watching this uh, ongoing conflict videos a lot. Uh, you know, it's mostly recently Ukraine Russia thing because obviously Kursk invasion and things like that. I've been, uh, you know, I've been watching a lot of videos from a lot of different channels. So if you like reactions like this, uh, you know, definitely like, comment, and you know, that way I'll know which type of videos to react to more, I guess. And you know, if any of the information you think is not like you know accurate or like I got something wrong, definitely comment down. Always read comments, and that's always fun. Ukrainian F-16s have officially entered the fight amid what's being called the largest Russian air attack of the war thus far. On Monday night, Russia launched a massive air assault on Ukrainian targets all across the nation, mostly related to the Ukrainian electrical grid. This attack included some 127 crews and ballistic missiles of various sorts and another 109 long-range one-way attack drones. And according to Ukrainian officials, they did a pretty effective job of intercepting these weapons, with a claimed 102 out of 127 missiles downed and another 99 out of 109 drones taken out. And among those aerial victories, were reportedly several cruise missiles taken down by Ukraine's new... Yeah, okay. So, yeah, intercepts. That makes sense. They, they've intercepted a lot of the incoming drones and missiles. Yeah, F-16s can do that in the first place. Awesome, right? Because they're supposed to be like this uh, multi-purpose, more like air dominance thing, right? F-15s are supposed to be dual engine and things like that, right? You think like they would be more better at intercepting. But yeah, F-16 can do that as well. It's awesome. F-16s. Now, we don't know how many F-16s participated in this defensive effort, or even specifically what types of weapons they shot down. But based on the flight profile of Russian ballistic missiles like the Iskander-M short-range ballistic missile and Kinzel air-launched ballistic missile, it's very unlikely these F-16s played a role in stopping those weapons. Instead, it's much more likely that these F-16s played a part in taking down the bevy of surface and air-launched cruise missiles that Russia threw into Ukraine on Monday night. You see, cruise missiles like Russia's KH-101, 3M-14, or KH-59 operate a lot more like tactical aircraft than like ballistic missiles. They're powered by air-breathing jet engines, usually than like ballistic missiles. Yeah, this is really important, right? Because this is what ballistic means, right? When you see, basically, it goes to space, like space show, like it leaves our atmosphere and basically like a bullet, ballistic, it shoots down, which is like insanely fast. Well, these are like cruise missiles, like that is in the name cruise. 
right uh so i'm pretty sure like i've seen like i made i'm pretty sure i made a video about like enforcer's reaction right i don't know i think i did uh, where he showed like a missile striking you know like water or something while there were some soldiers looking on basically those things are cruise cruise missiles because if you're ballistic you won't be able to see it you'll be just instant just blast like what what happened hey, it's a ballistic missile so yeah cruise missiles drones like yeah the things like that ballistic missile i guess uh, can, can something like f-16 intercept ballistic like i'm pretty sure you need something like ages and like patriots and you know system like that they're powered by air-breathing jet engines, usually turbojets, not unlike older fighters like the F-5 Tiger II, and can usually achieve high subsonic speeds, but can occasionally even reach supersonic ones, like Russia's KH-22, which is an air-launched anti-ship cruise missile that Russia has been using to engage ground targets inside Ukraine. Now, because these weapons fly under turbojet power, their trajectory is usually at a lower altitude and much more horizontal than a ballistic missiles would. And that makes them much more difficult to detect as they approach, thanks to their ability to hide behind the curvature of the Earth and even the terrain. But with most of these weapons topping out at between 600 and 700 miles per hour and no really appreciable means of defending themselves against a fighter jet, they actually make for pretty easy prey for platforms like the F-16. And when we saw Ukraine's F-16s first revealed to the public just a few weeks ago, they were in fact carrying an air-to-air -air loadout, which I posited at the time suggested that they were going to be used first as air defense assets before moving on to support ground operations. Now, in our first glimpses of Ukraine's F-16s, they appeared to be carrying older AIM-120B, or Bravo, AMRAMs, advanced medium-range air-to-air missiles, as well as AIM-9M and AIM-9L Sidewinder infrared-guided air-to-air missiles. And these weapons are both pretty well suited for engaging cruise missiles, but in this circumstance, it was likely variants of the AIM-9 Sidewinder used to down these missiles. And that is specifically because the Sidewinder is a less expensive weapon, and it's certainly capable of taking down a cruise missile. Now, the AIM-9L is a much older weapon. It first entered service in 1977, and the AIM-9M is an updated iteration of the same, which joined the fight in 1991, scoring 10 air-to-air -air kills in Operation Desert Storm. Now, these are short-range infrared-guided weapons, with the AIM-9M really not being much good outside of 10 miles, meaning these F-16s had to close to within pretty close quarters of these cruise missiles in order to engage them. And that means... That's interesting. I've been hearing about sidewinders a lot, like how often they're used. So it's because they're cheaper compared to anything else. But they have downsides, like you have to be 10 miles closer, which in itself is like threatening, especially in the modern world. Uh, you know, if you're like stealth fighters, like F-35 and F-22, you, you don't want to use sidewinder because like stealth factor is like kind of like gone because the whole point of those planes are like shooting from long distances before anybody can even see you type of way but yeah with f-16 like yeah in, for intercepting that makes sense so yeah I, this is one thing i've been noticing america has been developing a lot of things like you know even i was surprised like wait a minute this is a newer thing and it costs less than the thing it's replacing right uh, that, that's a trend i'm seeing so i guess us is more like you know moving towards that like building things that cost less and does relatively the same job so in the end of that, when it comes to logistics, right, like money matters, right? And like, if you don't have something that's like cheap enough, like you're probably not going to use it that much. At that point, what's the use of that? So this is the one thing I'm seeing emerging, right? Like making che cheap enough things that you can actually use. Means it's at least feasible that the F-16s may have even used their M61 Vulcan 20 millimeter rotary cannon to take down these oh, missiles. Yeah. But to be honest, I find that pretty unlikely. You see, while the M61 Vulcan is an incredible weapon, this six-barrel rotary cannon can fire... I mean, it, it has to be like the movie type. Then again, after watching Factors, and I'm convinced there are people in like military which are really like Tom Cruise level badass in real life, apparently. So I can see that happening, who the fuck knows? But yeah, why not like cruise missiles, like shooting it down with a, you know, basically a gun like that. And like they're traveling like less than one Mac, which like... F-16 can easily do that, 0.82, 1.2, so yeah, I, I guess they can get close enough to do that, who knows. 6 
thousand of these huge 20 millimeter rounds per minute. That's 100 of these per second. But the M61 is usually only used within one to 2,000 feet of your target. And we're talking about engaging cruise missiles that are carrying 1,000 plus pound high explosive blast fragmentation oh, warheads. Yeah. Meaning if you were to shoot that laser beam of 20 millimeter rounds at this weapon, there's a solid chance that the debris cloud produced by the exploding cruise missile could actually damage the F-16 engaging it. And that's why I think it's much more likely that these engagements took place at one to three or maybe five miles out using Sidewinder missiles. Especially because while these AIM-9L and M variants are nowhere near as capable as the most modern AIM-9Xs, they are still capable of high off-bore sight targeting, meaning Ukrainian F-16 pilots could actually target those cruise missiles without having to orient the nose of the aircraft directly at them. They can just use their line of sight to lock on to that target. But it is always possible that Ukrainian pilots opted to keep their distance and try out that AIM-120B AMRAAM. Now, the AIM-120B is also a fairly dated weapon and nowhere near as capable as the latest and greatest AMRAAMs in the American inventory, but it is nonetheless a very capable weapon. This radar-guided air-to-air missile can probably take down targets from outside of 40 miles in the best of circumstances, and certainly could engage 13,000-pound cruise missiles like Russia's KH-22. But these weapons are much more expensive, and the further away from a target you are upon launch, the greater the chances there are for a miss, and you don't want to waste these missiles. And again, that's why I think it's most likely that Ukraine's F-16s were using sidewinders for the job, the same way U.S. Navy Super Hornets were taking down cruise missiles over the Red Sea with a very similar weapon system earlier this year. Now, details about the F-16... Yeah, the Iran one, right? Iran launched a lot, uh, you know, tons of, like, missiles and drones at Israel. 99% or something, like, got in intercepted this way. Okay, well... Are, are Ukrainians just flying F-16 in the air all the time just so they can intercept something? Or did they just radars picked up like, oh, the missiles are incoming, they suddenly ran to the F-16 and just like flew? I mean, can you have that kind of a time to basically get in the F-16 and fly that faster and actually intercept these missiles? I mean, I guess like if you're like moving hundreds of miles and if your radar pick it up, like I guess you have time to get into your F-16 and try to intercept it? I don't know. 16s that participated in this effort, including where they're based out of, are minimal and are likely to stay that way as F-16s require pretty long, well-manicured runways that could make for easy targets for Russian long-range attacks. And as such, Ukraine needs to keep the actual locations of these aircraft pretty close to the chest. But as always, as new details do emerge, you can find updates on Sandbox News. Yeah, that is that is something, right? <clears throat> yeah, using F-16. To, uh, didn't Russia realize that most of those things are going to be like, how many got intercepted, right? I'm pretty sure the Enforcer video talked about like, a lot of got intercepted, but not all of it. Not the same success that US had in Iran, basically. Israel, where Iran, you know, launched a lot of it, more than 90, 90 or 99% got intercepted. That wasn't the case in this time in here, but still a lot of got intercepted, I don't know. Yeah, that is interesting. But if Russia gets information of where the F-16s are held and they strategically attack that place, <laughs> would America give more planes to Ukraine? Wouldn't they be like, okay, we just gave you F-16 and somehow all the got ruined? Like, I don't know. I don't know how, where that would go. But yeah, I guess like F-16 is like old enough now. America can just like, yeah, okay, we had more of them, I guess. We're using F-18 and F-35s now, so I don't know. Right, well, uh, that was Ukraine's F-16 just scored their first intercepts of the war. Yeah, that is interesting. So, yeah, it's finally the stats are rising up of F-16s, right? This was on Sandbox. If you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.